Trustee. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Karen Dwyer, if you don't know me. And I was asked this morning to give a stewardship testimony. I uh, need to give you a little advance warning. Many of you that may not know, I will occasionally just break into a little song because one of the gifts the Lord's given me is there's a song for every occasion. And you'd be surprised some of the songs I come up with. There's within my heart a melody. Okay. So, um, church, our God, Jehovah Jireh, he provides. And as I was reflecting and I'm thinking, how do I distract you from looking at me, because one of my gifts is not public speaking, but look at some other things. I started preparing and I thought, you know, with Jehovah, our Heavenly Father, um, just imagine, woo-hoo, the inheritance. He's our Father, you know? And I read in uh, Psalm 50:10 where we read, for every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. And I've mentioned that many times in my life because I just can't imagine. He owns everything. And when I hear that, that's such a strong statement. And Luke 12, 24 asks us to consider the ravens, for they, sow, they neither sow nor reap. They have no storeroom nor barn, and yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable we are than they are. So he's faithful, amen? My testimony is he's faithful. Um, so he's provided my family faithfully, shelter, food, clothing, his word, his love, and he's provided this church those very same things. Pa Pastor shared last week in his message, uh, live to give. This is a worthy and a personal aspiration. In 1 Peter 4.10, as each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And then in Luke 12, he, the Lord said, Who then is faithful and sensible steward, whom his master will put in charge of his servants to give them their rations at the proper time? Blessed is the slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes home. As believers, the Lord has entrusted us with gifts and talents. And while he, our master, since he's left, while he's away, May he find us faithful with the things he entrusted us, good stewards, when he returns. So most of you have heard the uh, parable of the talents in Matthew 25. I'm not going to read through these because uh, you guys can check them out later. But the parable talks about a young man, or a man, he doesn't say his age, who goes on a journey and he entrusts four of his slaves or stewards with his uh, possessions. We hear how each one handles this responsibility differently, and we hear the outcome of their varying approaches to stewardship. Check, check that scripture out later. So I brought my toolbox this morning. I went ahead and unlocked it. Uh, a lot of our toolboxes sit in garage, storing the things we might need at the time we need them, and we go and search for them and find them. Um, in my toolbox, I've put a few things that I call uh, tools for using my gifts. The first I've already taken out is the Bible. So this is God's Word, the Holy Scriptures. In 1 Corinthians 4, we read, Let a man regard in this manner as servants of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. It is required that stewards they can be found trustworthy of his word. So this is his word, and he shares it with us, the mysteries of God, and like all our other gifts, we're to pass those on and share the God's word with others. The, another parable I thought about was the widow's mite. Um, two copper coins this widow had to give, and that was if you read about it, barely a day's wages. It was, it's like a 64th of a day's wages, and there's varying, it's half a penny, eighth of a penny, a bunch of different things. Well, the bottom line is, wasn't very much, but it was all she had. <clears throat> My giving and your giving, it's a matter of the heart. 
It's a matter of the heart. It's between the giver and me, or the giver and you. So uh, visual aids have always planted seeds more deeply for me, as you can see, and it distracts you from looking at me. So um, I have some copper coins. You notice in my box I also have, and don't get too, too excited, this is Monopoly money. So in my box of gifts are some money, is some money. And I don't know if we have two young helpers I can pull from the, from the crowd, please. Okay. Well, would you like to find two? This is to help me just, I see you guys back there. Hustle on up here. I know you're there. <laughs> it can give on that side of the church, one to everybody and hustle, hustle. Um, so there's a copper coin probably worth much more than this the widow's might would have been but as a visual aid I like to have things like that in my hand and this one's a little bit of a pun but it's a song that just popped in my head because it has might in it great and mighty is the Lord our God anyway yeah um, I warned you right uh, what else do I have here? So another area of gifting is teaching, and this isn't going to stay on my head, so you get the idea, right? Because I have a lot of hair. So um, in teaching, we have uh, teaching how to read. I have children that are teachers, um, and you know what? What a magnificent miracle to be able to teach a human being how to read. And, and see that to fruition. And um, I have maps and rulers. And, you know, this is important to learn, right? So we have teacher gift in our, in our body. And I've had the opportunity the Lord's put for me to do that in my life. Oh, gosh, so the song, the B-I-B-L-E. I, I warned you, right? <laughs> Um, so, that's right, everybody knows the song, right? <laughs> um, you may have seen or been a uh, party to one of my gifts of writing. So I have my little inkwell, okay? Um, God's blessed me with that gift, and sometimes I'm uh, very particular about my writing, but I am so grateful he's given it to me and I've been able to use it for him. I'm also a numbers person. Thank you, you can just set it down there. So spreadsheets are kind of my second language. <laughs> and um, I tried to find an abacus, but I, I wasn't able to put my hands on one as a visual aid. Uh, ministry of song, so I have my guitar here and other instruments you see behind us. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. <laughs> so the transition here is, you know, you start in your Christian life and you, you can take gift tests and know how God's going to use you. and. You neatly put them, you know what your gifts are, and what I found is as you use them, God gives you more. And so you noticed I expanded into a rolling suitcase because he's going to give you as much as you'll take if your arms are open. And so this also, because it's heavy, is a lot easier to carry around and roll with me. So something else is... the. Uh, ministering. Uh, so I'm an engineer. Uh, so I have some engineering things. <laughs> I have this kind of engineering things for the Star Wars fans because I know there's a few in here. Legos. These, this is how I knew a couple of my kids were going to be engineers. <clears throat> and the next one I have on my list is uh, I did include in there too, and I won't get everything out. Uh, 
the science part of engineering, because I have binoculars and magnifying glasses, and that made me think, this is my father's world. Lord God, help us to see everything through your eyes that you've created. Um, the one that was in my first box, I'm allowed to use a little humor, right? I hope so. It, this isn't a funny matter, my prayer, little prayer book. Um, we've really, as a church, been able to come together a lot to pray recently, and I'm, I'm grateful. I see the strength of it, um, but I know that uh, we haven't answered all of them yet, Lord, and we're going to keep praying. So, this is, this is our prayer. <laughs> made a really long prayer list for you, to, but don't, uh, you don't need to read it because it's in Latin here. So the next one everybody has a little bit of, which is service. So I brought a few things that are service. Different tools for different people. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. Okay. A dust mine and uh, a whisk. Now, I gave you a copper coin, and I decided the one other thing that I could put in your hands as an outcome of the whisk was cookies. I made some cookies back there, but I'll warn you, one of my top gifts is not hospitality, so of course they didn't turn out as they usually do, but they're, they're out back and I'll, <laughs> I'll have them when we're done. And I, um, the last on my series of list is my children. God gave us the gift of children. So, I couldn't put my hands on a quiver. But this really, the illustration, I'm sorry, because so let me get it over with. Um, there are seven here, because four are already home with the Lord. But how many times have you read that story? Um, I think I have it right here. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. So we read that and we say, yeah, but I'm telling you, you look at these bad boys. So we just, my first two, our first two, sorry, have gotten married and started their families. They've been shot off, loosed, third one just was loosed and is starting a family. When these get shot, they go far and they take, you know, when we shoot off our children, they take with them what they've been taught by us and by you and by the, the world. And they're ready to go out into the world. If I, I can't sing right now, but the song Overwhelmed comes to mind, so that's appropriate. So gifts and talents are given to us not to be treasured, not to hold on too tightly, or store safely <laughs> for when we want to use them or need to use them. His resources are given to us to pass along to others for his glory, at his time, for his purpose. You may have heard the phrase that we're conduits. We're not conduits, we're reservoirs, so let let the gifts pass through. So know your talents, don't bury them, and make yourself accessible, because he'll give you more. I'm so very amazed, overwhelmed, humbled, and loved. And as I um, last read the Great Commission in Matthew 28, I read it one more time, and I thought, I'm going to simplify for this purpose and say, as you go, give. So as you're going and making disciples and all the other parts of the, the Great Commission, as you go, give. Let me pray with us before Pastor comes up. I hope I didn't take all your time, Pastor. <laughs> you can use some of my toys. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for your design of human beings, Lord. Early in, the, in your word in Genesis, you give us charge of your creation, Lord. I thank you, 
uh, that you give each one of us, very various gifts, Lord. They complement one another. We sharpen one another with those gifts, Lord. I pray that you reveal them to them, uh, reveal them to us if that we haven't yet discovered them, or if others see something in us, Lord, that we're open to hear from our brothers and sisters. You have a purpose for this church, and it's going to take the gifts of the, the people in it to help accomplish that, Lord. I pray for each and every person that they come to that. And right now I pray for the pastor as he comes to give us his message. And uh, I love you, Lord God, with all my heart. And I lift all these things in the sum of your name, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> 